King spoke so many years ago about as the dream of the 1960s become the nightmare of the 80s has the dream simply been deferred awaiting new leadership and inspirations tonight we have some of the black leaders of today Roy Innes of core to the Reverend Al Sharpton some people took some people call Al the talking microwave because I'll tell you, he can heat up anything in a hurry. Who speaks for black America? Roy Innes? Al Sharpton? Who speaks? You'll be the judge. Join us tonight. One of the problems in our country that we really don't address is the white people trying to tell black people who their leadership should be. One of those problems is addressed because the white people, we haven't been able to pick too many good leaders. Well, who does pick the leadership? And what is leadership? It was Martin Luther King. Certainly it's a Jesse Jackson. He got seven million votes. Tonight, I want to introduce you. I want to introduce you to two. One very good friend of mine, Roy Innes, and another gentleman. And the interesting dichotomy of it all, another good friend, Al Sharp. I mean, Al, Al and I have gone out drinking together, but he uses it on his hair. You're not smiling tonight. No sense of humor tonight. Gentlemen, uh, let me go first to Al. On last night's show, you had the audacity to praise Louis Farrakhan and call Roy Innes a big... Reverend... Would you explain to Roy Ennis why he's a bigot? Well, I would not explain to Roy why he's a bigot. I'll explain to your audience. I was a person that had respect for Mr. Ennis. Uh, Mr. Ennis in the late 60s uh, was a nationalist leader in this community. And many of the things that I praise Farrakhan for now in terms of self-help programs and in terms of having integrity Mr. Ennis represented but in this transitional stage, uh, Mr. Ennis went from a man who would challenge a Bob Abrams to a man who would curtail and kowtow and back down to a Bob Abrams. Just two years ago, Mr. Ennis and I were friends. 
when a lot of ex corps members were making allegations. But when one uh, bum, who he knew was a bum, tried to, to, to turn on us, Roy, in his assignment, embraced them. Because anything that goes against our community, whether it's Bork, whether it's Bernard Getz, whether it's Tawana Brown, Roy Ennis takes the other side. I feel that if Mr. Abrams, who has an active investigation on Roy, who Roy has said to me is using a Jewish plot against him, if Mr. Abrams and the IRS can make you get on your knees, Roy, fast. That's your problem. You should shut up and let those of us that have enough guts to stand up and fight, stand up and fight. Because there's some of us that investigations and indictments and the rest don't mean anything to. How you can go from a critic of Bob Abrams to an apologist of Bob Abrams makes you suspect at best and a sellout in fact. How does it feel to be classified as a bigot after a lifetime of fighting for civil rights? I will, I will say that I'm probably one of the... Now please zip it. We're going to let everyone talk tonight. And that's what the loudmouth support. Let these guys talk first. Go ahead. I'm one of the few non-bigoted black leaders run, I would say. Let me state now, let's deal with the facts. Let's go to the record. Tonight, we want to deal with the records and the facts. Please do it. On this program, your program, you heard me, you have me on tape defending this man. Recently, even after the shenanigans with him and the That's other... That's a lot of crap. No, no, brother, you have your time. That's a lot of crap. Brother, and I got brother, brother, I got brother, I got Please, we're going to continue with the show. We're going to continue with the show. We're going to be cool. We're going to go to a 